So good morning, Alistair. Uh, great to see you. Uh, maybe if you could give us a quick recap, because uh, you've got a lot of news to cover about inflection, some of the big milestones of last year, and just uh, what your guys' focus is. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. Thanks. Um, so inflection resources, we are um, exploring Eastern Australia, specifically New South Wales, uh, Australia, for very large copper gold uh, deposits uh, in a belt of rocks called the Macquarie Arc. And uh, this is a big belt of rocks that extends several hundred kilometers, and it's host to uh, some of Australia's uh, biggest mines. Uh, the, the giant deposit in the belt is uh, Cadia. This is uh, Newcrest, oh, sorry, Newmont Mining's uh, flagship operation in Australia, now recently acquired from uh, the, uh, as part of the uh, Newcrest acquisition. Uh, this is a, a massive copper gold deposit, very long life deposit, and uh, really um, yeah, it's one of the, the type deposits which we're looking for. Uh, the other two in the belt are uh, North Parks and uh, and um, Cal. These are massive uh, copper gold mines all owned by Evolution Mining, one of Australia's biggest uh, copper gold miners as well. And uh, to cut a long story short, uh, this belt of rocks uh, sort of trends north-south and uh, all these major mines occurs in the, the southern part of the belt. And this belt of rocks disappears to the north under a big blanket of sedimentary cover, masking the prospective geology. And inflection now over a number of years has acquired a massive uh, land position covering the whole cord, covered northern extension of this belt. And uh, we've got a partnership with Anglo Gold uh, exploring these huge uh, targets uh, through a very... Uh, systematic and disciplined uh, exploration program drilling through this uh, sedimentary cover. So it's a, a technically driven story, uh, looking for very big uh, copper gold deposits under cover in New South Wales. Uh, it is very technical and we're not going to scare anyone off, so don't run away. We're not going to get too technical ourselves, but it's important to know that it is that technical because it drives the eyes of uh, like let's say uh, lately uh, accumulated team members beefing up your team and, and board. Um, maybe let, before I jump into that, I, cause it goes without saying, and, and sometimes it's uh, I, I'll brush through things is, I mean, there's infrastructure there. You can drive through uh, the amount, like there's workforce, everything is there. If someone is looking to to look for a project that is new early stage with, with da data, with a huge partner, uh, all done in a fairly quick period of time, uh, publicly, I'm sure there's a lot of work behind the scenes privately, but publicly facing, uh, it makes the story a ton of check marks in a relatively short period of time. Absolutely. So this is a really important point, and thanks for mentioning it, Andrew. I mean, you know, Australia obviously is a fantastic uh, mining jurisdiction, and, and specifically New South Wales. I mean, they go out of the way to actively encourage investment in mining exploration, and and part of the reason we are there is because of uh, data that was collected by the government of New South Wales specifically to encourage groups like ours to to uh, to come to the, the states and the country. So it's uh, it's very pro-mining. You know, we're operating in a part of the state uh, where, as you mentioned, there's, there's tremendous infrastructure, although it is quite remote. We're de mostly dealing in areas of sort of uh, cattle country or areas where they grow, you know, huge amounts of grain and things like this. But, so it's cut with a network of roads and, and power and whatnot. So it's a very um, logistically simple uh, place to operate. There's no real seasonality as such and things like this. It's a it's a dream place to work in that respect and uh, just a very easy place to, to get around. And, and what this really translates to, it, it makes very cost effective exploration not having remote camps and uh, helicopters and all this sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, beautiful place to operate. And uh, so if we're successful in finding something here, I think, it's like, you know, have a very good chance of uh, potentially developing something. And it's big. And that's and people like that. It's not just trying to get an economic, uh, decent resource to to maybe pass along. It's, it's that big game hunting that anyone who's new into mining and anyone who's been paying attention to gold in the news and seeing uh, how important gold is playing in, in our economy and coming back to be in the news quite a bit uh will will want to be involved in stories that have all these kind of check marks now I, before uh I, we mentioned and you said newcrest as well so it's kind of funny because uh uh slip of the tongue but you had a great uh addition to the team i'll let you kind of tell and then it, it ties in together why good projects attract great technical people yeah absolutely so you're right a slip of the tongue there um <laughs> Newcrest Mining for many years had the, the big Cadia deposit uh, in the southern part of the belt, which was acquired by, by Newmont Mining uh, 
uh, I guess a, a few months ago now. And uh, ultimately, there's been a little bit of a reorganization within that group. And uh, the former global head of exploration, a gentleman called Fraser McCorkendale, who, who led the whole team globally and involved in some of the very big acquisition discoveries that uh, Newcrest made over the years, uh, agreed to join uh, the board of inflection. And uh, he came on the board now a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, he's as wealth of knowledge, both globally, but as more specifically relevant to us, uh, he's an expert in the geology of uh, of New South Wales, and particularly having looked at Cadia and looked for other Cadia lookalikes in the belt, he's got a wealth of uh, knowledge uh, he brings to the table as well. So tremendous uh, addition to to the board, and we're thrilled uh, thrilled to have him on board. The other the other gentleman uh, we we brought on on uh, as part of the team is uh, Dr. Neil Adshead. And uh, Neil's a, a well-known individual in the in the exploration and, and mining space, and uh, yeah, Neil uh, has got a, a varied background with uh, sort of fund management, but also in the mining exploration business as well. And uh, Neil uh, joined us uh, recently as uh, an advisor at the same time. So again, thrilled to have uh, somebody like uh, Neil with that caliber of experience and background uh, join the company. And we were talking just a little bit before you're saying you know, the uh, the addition of these advisors has gotten a, a heck of a lot of you know phone calls, emails, people reaching out. Uh, and for people that are kind of newer, that are certainly in, in my crowd, the subscribers, uh, it's a very easy way if you're analyzing a company to kind of look and say, if you've attracted this person and they've worked on these projects and this is their background and they want to join the team, that without you having to know a lot about geology, that uh, can can give you a bit of you know, comfort that, that you've attracted people like that. You've attracted big companies like Anglo Ashanti. Uh, you're attracting these partners. Uh, even if someone is is new, they can feel like that's a good metric for me to, to look at, to base my decisions on. Absolutely. And, you know, just speaking generally, and, and you know, as an investor myself, um, you know, I'll, I will look at uh, people like that and, and see where they pop up. And uh, you just know there's, there's a high level of diligence being applied to uh, uh you know to the companies before they join so uh, yeah it's really uh you know again speaking generally it's a big rubber stamp when you see these sort of high profile individuals uh, joining uh companies it really validates you know the other team members and, and the strategy etc cetera, etc cetera. so no very much so and it's no different than i mean like uh, bill gates and Elon Musk. if they joined on something or they even tweet something out there's a whole crowd that follows that now of course mining isn't quite that uh a trendier in the news, but it, it works the same way. People will follow deal flow and follow people because once again, they know that the work is being done by that person to to even want to consider holding a meeting, never mind joining a board or coming on board. Absolutely. No, it's really key. It's uh these uh these early stage exploration companies are all about the people. And uh, you know, the older I get uh, and the more time I spend in this business, I you know, I really appreciate that being the, the case. And uh it really, it's all about the the people and the, the people, the vision and uh, the ability to execute in a in a in a in a tremendous manner. And now you've done uh, some geophysics as well, and you've had uh, Ashanti Gold as well pick a target or pick some targets. Uh, let you kind of dive into that, which is also pretty exciting because that's some of the things that people have been waiting for is to say, okay, what's the next step? Where are we going? What, what are we looking at? Yeah. So since uh, I guess we last spoke, Andrew, we. Uh, We've been executing on a, a stage one of a, a multi-stage agreement with Anglo Gold Ashanti. So Anglo Gold uh, took on uh, essentially a deal to to explore our entire portfolio. We've got over seven thousand square kilometers of ground in this northern covered extension of this belt, and uh, Anglo Gold is helping us systematically drill test as part of a phase one program all of the targets. And broadly speaking, there's about thirty six massive targets. And we're poking sort of two or three holes in in each of those. It's sort of a first pass uh, scout drill program, if you will. And uh, the way the deal is structured, uh, the the phase one comprises of expenditures of ten million Australian dollars of of, of drilling, which comprise about thirty thousand meters of of drilling. And um, at the end of that phase one, the Anglo Gold retains the right to select up to five projects where there's a mechanism to earn ultimately up to 75% on each of those individual projects. Now, what uh, we announced now just uh, a few days ago, uh, Anglo Gold's uh, approach is about early election of a phase two project. And uh, we have one project in particular called Duck Creek, which has returned a number of uh, sort of encouraging results uh, through that um through that first pass uh, scout drilling program. 
and uh, Anglo Gold ultimately have selected that uh, that project uh, to come on as a, a phase two project. So it's a, a wonderful thing. It allows us to run uh, phase two uh, in parallel with uh, phase one, and it's uh, it's sort of separate amount of, of expenditures as well. So there's potentially up to a uh, $7 million worth of additional uh, expenditures as part of that phase two project uh, that where Anglo Gold retains the right to an up to initial 51% interest. So it's a tremendous thing. Uh, we'll continue with the regional drilling as well as uh, kick off the sort of phase two uh, drilling on this Duck Creek target, which will be really, really uh, deep, deep, much deeper drill holes. Yeah, uh, there's, there's initially, I think it's eight holes, eight deep holes planned to test a variety of of new uh, geophysical targets that have recently been uh, eliminated. And uh, so what after this, these steps, what's the next things that people should be looking for other than obviously they're waiting for the results, but that could take a little bit of time here. Yeah, so I mean, there's basically, um, it's all about the drilling. Yeah. So it's the continuation of the phase one drill program. And we've pretty much been drilling nonstop since uh, uh, July uh, last year, uh, with the exception of a little break over the uh, year end period. Uh, so there's uh, so that phase one program is continuing to run. Uh, and then the phase two drill program here at Duck Creek will, will kick off um over the over the coming uh coming days here really so uh so it's all about that drilling andrew and uh, really um we'll just watch out for those those drill results as, as they come out how are you anticipating uh drill results this year i know like canada drills results sometimes can take a bit of time were you guys finding any issues there uh is the work i mean done in australia yeah no there's i mean there's no seasonality right so yeah where we're operating so uh you know it's really um it's sort of a steady stream. We have had a few delays, certainly, with the labs, I think, uh, but uh, you know, they are quite busy. Uh, but uh, for the most part, it's just sort of a continuous flow of assays. And we typically put, uh, you know, release results in batches, yeah. you know, once we drill a sort of a handful of, of, of projects or targets. So that's really been the MO to date, is just getting batches of uh, first pass drill holes out. And then, uh, obviously, uh, as the phase two program on our Duck Creek target uh, progresses, we'll put news out on that as well. Uh, so I think I think it uh, it's important to, to mention that my my job is to try to get a lot of retail people excited about this, and part of that, oddly enough, is to show them that I think it's two thirds of the company is held by like ten major uh, shareholders. Now those are obviously like institution and management and and whatnot, but that uh, that shows like a deep deep commitment to a project. Uh, and also having the Anglo Ashanti partner, this phase one that people are, are going to be watching, very excited, uh, that it, it, it opens up a possibility for retail that uh, they normally, they're just not seeing. Like, and that's that's kind of our, our goal here, is to put stories like this in front of people uh, that have this kind of backing, this kind of support, uh, because if it goes, the float, I mean, it moves, it starts to move uh, if great results and good markets are are, are there. Yeah, no, absolutely. So about two thirds of the companies uh, held by 10 individuals and the management team, I think, owns about 28 percent of that. So we're very lucky to have some some very patient and, uh, uh, you know, key shareholders have got a long term view of what we're what we're trying to achieve. And uh, the two big institutions that are, are supporting the, the company are uh, resource capital funds and uh, and Crescat Capital. And uh, they've been with us now for, for quite a while. But, it you know, it is a long term gain. Uh, but the beauty of uh, of inflection, in, in my opinion, uh, is that uh, you know we're obviously obviously not raising capital anytime soon. So the stock is is tightly held. We're not going to the markets. Uh, we're receiving, and we didn't get into this, uh, you know, a ten percent management fee for for operating the joint venture on behalf of Anglo Gold, and that's going to bring in somewhere between a million and a million and a half dollars. Uh, this year into the treasury as well. So we're, we're sort of cash neutral or fairly close to it, I think, yeah. in terms of our, our burn and whatnot, our corporate overheads. So, um, you know, we're in pretty good shape. And, uh, you know, another key point here is, you know, with, with the drilling that's ongoing, I mean, we, we're, we're testing a lot of very big targets here. And, and critically, you know, it's important to stress the scale of these targets. We are truly looking for tier one scale discovery here. And, uh, and I can say that truthfully, these are massive kilometer scale features that critically have never been drill tested before. 
So that's the real exciting thing here. The stock is fairly tightly held. Approximately a third of the company is in, is in retail hands. Um, and, you know, if we're successful with the drill, you know, I think uh, the stock uh, stock should do quite well. But uh, obviously, that's a that's a big forward looking statement there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, copper has been on, on a tear. If I just like leave the, the gold out for just a second, my copper is, is really, you know, bouncing back. And we've got Goldman for years saying it's the new oil. And really, if you if if you're looking at copper because of that, because of Goldman, because of the battery store and the electrification of the future, then you need like you need a big target, like little small ones. Great. That's wonderful. But this type of uh, scope is the type of things that uh, uh, as I'll kind of look at exploration as an R&D. You're the R&D of, a, of a, a major arm. That's what they're looking for. They want someone to go find something massive, something big that they can get their teeth sunk into and help JV out and build together. Yeah, no, very much so. I mean, I think, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of Anglo, but I think, yeah. you know, having that huge district scale land position that we acquired through essentially uh, staking open ground, um, you know, controlling the northern two thirds of this belt. Uh, I think that's really attractive uh, to a group like Anglo here. And, uh, you know, having the team that's already assembled with the, the, the targets already defined and, and a very clear strategy and focus. Uh, I think that's that's very appealing uh, for for Anglo and and you know speaking generally, I think from a a big company perspective, if if you, all you have to do is provide capital and a little bit of guidance, uh, that's kind of the perfect uh, perfect outcome for a for a major company, particularly if they're targeting you know deposits of choice in a, in a jurisdiction ultimately where they want to own their assets in the long term. So uh, that's 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 very key part of the the overall strategy as well. The one thing that I like when I speak to you and and uh, other companies that that we really like is I tend to be impatient, but it's always that stress from a, a scientific point of view of like methodical, slow down, let's do this correctly, especially like on such a scale, because you you don't want to go too far down the road and, and try to backtrack. That doesn't work. So it's uh, asking people to have patience in mining is a terrible thing to do, and I never do it. But it's great to be reminded of why it's so critical to do this step by step and methodically at the beginning, uh, as you as you do, um, to get uh, an end result that that is a lot easier to manage or, or maintain. Yeah, no, it is very much a long term strategy. And uh, look, I think any anybody that's trying to do a you know, it's something new in a, in, a, in a belt that hasn't really been explored. I mean, it just takes time. And, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, explore a very, very large area. Say it's about, it's, you know, 7,000 square kilometers. And we're trying to whittle that down into uh, a much smaller areas. Call it, you know, reduction of the search space is what we, we talk about in the, in the business. And uh, it just takes time. And it's that sort of constant uh, learning of the the work, the ongoing work that we're doing. I mean, every drill hole we drill, um, yeah, adds to our understanding of this northern uh, sort of covered extension of the belt. So the, the it's it's a sort of an iterative process, and it gets tweaked as we go with our with our understanding over time. So, I guess that's a long way of me saying it just takes a long time, <laughs> and it is a process, and uh, you know, it's it is uh, it does require a very sort of systematic and and disciplined approach, especially when you're testing lots and lots of new targets. Uh, it's important to apply your your ongoing, evolving understanding of uh, of the belt to uh, to your to your targeting. And, and we're well underway. That phase one. I mean, testing some of these out. That's. I mean, we're looking forward to seeing what that reveals, uh, what the data shows, and the, what, what if you get any sniffs, what the hints at. So we're quite excited. I'm sure there's going to be lots of news flow coming out, and uh, it's always great talking with you over reflection. Uh, it's one of these stories we we love because it's that huge treasure hunting one. It's of the scope and scale that when we talk about, you know, the electrification of the future, this is the type of, if, you know, I, I'm saying if it's a tier one asset, it's a type of thing that can actually make a difference. Uh, and that's the type of thing that uh, is, is really intriguing. And I think should be able to draw in a, a newer crowd into mining as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the key as well. You know, looking for something very, very big, you know, things have to be big to move the needle for these big companies. And, uh, We'd be thrilled to to tag one of these tier one scale uh, discoveries, but every hole we're drilling uh, is testing something big and new. And uh, you know, we're every day we're looking, you know, the data as it comes in in the morning and uh, wondering what on earth we've hit overnight. So it's, <laughs> it's a very very exciting uh, uh, opportunity. Excellent. Well, Alistair, thanks so much, and uh, we're going to have our eyes peeled uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of, of the day here. Thank you very much, Andrew. Take care. 